the use of longitudinal metatarsal arch support pads or metatarsal pads can give a patient significant relief from symptoms associated with Morton's neuroma, metatarsalgia, callosities on the plantar aspect of the foot, or pain associated with pronation or hyperpronation in the area of the longitudinal arch. The placement of the pads, whether it be a longitudinal arch pad or a metatarsal pad, sometimes seems difficult to a patient. Your physician may help you in the initial placement, but often it will be you who will place the pad from time to time later on, either replacing the pad or putting it in a new pair of shoes. Knowing some of the little tricks that we use can make a big difference in how you succeed with the use of these pads. Let's look at the anatomy of the foot because that will help us to understand where the two most common pads that I use are placed. If we look at the bottom of the foot, the two areas of importance with the placement of the hapad are the metatarsal heads and the arch of the foot. The two different pads that we use most frequently are the metatarsal pad, which will be placed just proximal to the metatarsal heads and the longitudinal arch pad, which is placed in the arch of the foot. When we examine the shoe in relationship to the anatomy of the foot, we realize that the arch is on the inner aspect. So in the placement of the hapad, part of it goes on the upper area or inner aspect of the arch, and part goes on the insole. If one just peels off the pad and sticks it down, in the arch area. If it's not in the right position, it's very difficult to move, especially after a patient's been walking on it for a while. A better technique that I've found is to peel back the adhesive paper just slightly so that there's just a little bit of the pad showing. Another trick that I'll do is I'll trim around the arch pad so that there's not as much paper inside the shoe. It's more comfortable then to see if it's in the correct position. Then in the placement of the pad, we move it up on the inner aspect of the shoe as we see here. Once the pad is in the shoe, you can carefully slide your foot into the shoe and step down on the pad in a weight-bearing position and see how it feels you'll usually know right away whether it's in the right position or not. Sometimes it'll feel like the pad is too close to the toe box, and sometimes it'll feel like it's too close to the heel. A nice trick then is then to just make a mark in your shoe where you've left the pad. Then what one can do is, because it's only attached barely to the insole with just a small area, you can either move it backwards towards the heel or forwards towards the toe. And say this one needs to be moved a little farther forward, you can stick it down, then again put your foot in the shoe and see how it fits. If it's a good fit, then I'll just make another mark like this and possibly another mark like this. Then remove the rest of the paper wrapper and put it back in the exact position that I want the pad to be in for the final fit. One then, one then steps down again, and it should be a good fit. Now let's look at another pad that you might frequently use, the metatarsal pad. The metatarsal pad is a smaller pad that is frequently used in the, the treatment of Morton's neuroma or callosities on the bottom of the foot. In this anatomical model, a pad might be placed just behind a painful callus in this region or a painful callus in this region. This would be the effect of the relief of pain by actually moving weight bearing beneath the metatarsal pads. Now obviously this pad will be stuck onto the insole rather than on the foot itself. And it's difficult for a patient sometimes to know where to put this pad in relationship to the painful area of their foot. A trick that I sometimes use in having a patient figure out where to place that pad is I'll use some lipstick. And what I'll do is I'll have them make a very thick mark with lipstick 
on the bottom of their foot where the painful area is. Then very carefully, they'll take their shoe and they'll slip their foot into the shoe, step down, and leave a mark on the insole. In this model that we see here, that's what it would look like. Once you've marked the insole for the problem area that you wish to relieve, there's two different ways that you can place the pad. If you're sure that the mark is in the right place and you've used these pads before, you can st merely stick the pad in the shoe just a little bit back from the mark. But sometimes you're not exactly sure where it is. And so rather than doing that, what you can do is just peel the wrapper back just like we did with the larger pad and then carefully trim around it so there's not a lot of paper inside the shoe itself and then stick it down in the same way that we did. Now what happens is, as you try this on, if you say, well, it needs to be moved forward or back, you can make another mark and then you can decide, should that pad be more comfortable, you can move it back or you can move it forward from the line. Then when you say that's the right position, you make your final mark, remove the pad, take the wrapper off, and stick it in place. One last test, you slip your foot into the shoe and step down on it and make sure that you have a good fit. Okay. There's some important information on the wrapper that can help you with purchasing more of these pads. At the top is the actual name of the product, and in this case, this is a longitudinal metatarsal arch pad. Then the next line, it will tell you whether it's for a left shoe or a right shoe and the actual size. Sometimes after using these pads for a while, a patient will decide they either need a thicker pad or a thinner pad, and there are various sizes and shapes of these pads. This happens to be a medium pad, but there are certainly large and extra large and small and extra small, and it just depends on what feels best for your foot. Another trick that I use in placing a pad, say in a sneaker, is many times there are removable insoles, and you can actually take the insole out of the shoe and step down on it and feel where the painful area might be. If you're placing a longitudinal arch pad, often it goes a little bit to the inner border of the insole. One can then slip this into the shoe and see if you have a good fit. Some find it easier to place the pad on the insole and place it in the shoe. It really depends on what works best for you. Sometimes a shoe has a removable insole and then you can place your pad exterior to the shoe. What one can do in this situation is you can see there is a little bit of buildup here, but for the most part this is a fairly flat insole. One can then place the pad here, and in this case, one moves it towards the inner aspect of the arch because there's not much buildup. Then one can put it back in the shoe, and the buildup is in the correct place. On the other hand, sometimes an insole will have a significant buildup. In this case, if you put the arch pad too far medial, you'll tend to have too much buildup. Therefore, we'll go to a smaller arch pad and actually move it more centrally in location, as we see in this example, and then place the insole and arch pad back in the shoe. Of course, the final proof of the best location is by putting that shoe on your foot and walking on it and trying it. Sometimes for metatarsalgia or for Morton's neuroma, you will place some lipstick on your foot and then step down, leaving an imprint on the insole. If the insole can be removed from the shoe, it's fairly easy to place the pad directly behind it and then once you have it in position to slip it back in the shoe, you then place the shoe on your foot and see if you've got the pad in the correct location.
Sometimes, even with high fashion footwear, the placement of a pad just up from the painful area will give significant relief. We hope some of the tricks we've demonstrated here will help you in the placement of the hay pad in the shoe, whether it's a metatarsal pad or a longitudinal metatarsal arch support. With a little patience, it really becomes an easy process.